Welcome to another Tech Stuff Whenever. Uh, we're going to be building a sub. Pretty big sub. I'm going to take you step by step through everything that was done wrong to begin with and why we're making it better and how we're making it better. So this, through the uh, knowledge of the internet, is a Shocker SIG motor. Now you probably have never heard of one of these if you haven't been in car audio for the last 15 plus years. Around 15 years ago, this was a very popular motor for use in SPL. And it's big and it looks strong and that's why people used it. And people did very well with these. And I won't get into uh, what exactly happened with that company, but they're no longer around and a lot of people got screwed. Somehow I've managed to end up with this motor. This is the narrow gap version. There was a narrow and a wide. And uh, that's what this is. No idea how it ended up coming across uh, me, other than somebody said, hey, this sub is messed up. I had somebody recone it. I haven't liked it since. And here we are. He brought it to the expert on how to rebuild this. So this is what I've got. Now they brought me a basket. I'm gonna use the basket. They brought me the spacer, I'm gonna use the spacer. But I'm gonna go through some of the things that were wrong with this show you what we're gonna do right so the same mistakes aren't made uh, if you check up here there's a, a video that I covered all of the things that were wrong with this sub when it was brought to me what that person did when you know a guy that can recone it so here we've got our motor step one the spacer uh, this is the spacer they brought to me I'm gonna use it uh, now, you might notice this has been drilled out. These were drilled out for a larger bolt because there are six holes in the mounting pattern that we're going to use. There's actually two patterns on here, but we're going to use the smaller one. These two holes are M6 by one millimeter, which is what is typically found on most motors. However, these other four, which are the only four bolts that were in it, are actually a 5 16 So we've got metric and we've got English slash American slash SAE slash Imperial slash not metric is what we've got for those four. And they didn't use panhead bolts and it was just awful. But that's why this is drilled out. All of them are drilled out to the larger size. We are going to put six bolts back in this. They're just going to be different bolts because they have to be. So there's our spacer, and again, they did the same thing on the basket. They did drill it out. So all of them will fit the larger pattern that they did not retap. all of those. I'm guessing maybe they stripped some out or something. That's the only reason you have to, to drill and retap those larger size. I don't know the history of it. All I know is it wasn't right, brought it to me. We're gonna make it right. So we're gonna use the bolts that are correct, which are gonna be these guys. These are the 5 sixteenths pan head. Um, quite often I will put a lock washer in there not for the use of a lock washer and how they're intended because it will not be torqued properly but to get a little bit more surface area. These pan head bolts have got an enormous amount of surface area so I am not worried about lock nuts on these. Uh, and I've got to find all of the holes That's what she said. for this size get them in place and then I can put the ones that don't match in there. I do everything in metric so I have all the fancy metric tools for tightening things but this one's English and this is all I've got. So I'm actually going to tighten these by hand and make sure that they are torqued very well because we don't want it to come loose. I'm a little shocked that because they're having the tapered head and only four of them in there. No thread locker, no lock nut, no proper torque. I actually took them out with a screwdriver by hand. So they were not in there super secure. Somehow they did not come loose.
So the next thing is going to the coil. This is the coil that we're using. You know, it's, it's pretty thin. We don't have much of a gap in this thing. Uh, the Gauss on this motor is about 6,400. Um, keep in mind, it's got a 30 millimeter tall top plate. So if this were a smaller top plate, that would be a higher number. It's still strong, but it's not crazy strong, particularly not by today's standards. So uh, the reason we're doing this coil is because this is the coil that came out of it. It's the wrong coil for the gap. Uh, it was entirely too tight. You know, so you got rubbing all over this. Nothing in here. This was not the correct fitment for this motor. And uh, also right there, Brazilian amplifier. So we can tell what kind of amp was on it. And uh, I don't think it was on it for very long to cause all this damage it's broken down here. Uh, was not on here very long, otherwise it would have cooked because the outside gap here between this top plate, super, super small, that's why it was rubbing. Uh, it's just generally awful. These two together, we center it up. You can tell there's a, a significant difference in the shape there. Uh, the coil ID is actually a little bit smaller on this one, so it's closer to the pole and further from the top plate. Uh, and you see how much wider that one was. Yes, it looks like it's only maybe not even a half millimeter, but that's the difference in it rubbing and not rubbing. Uh, it's entirely too close. So here is our coil. Our spider pack is this right here. Uh, this is made of four spiders to make this. This is not a single spider. I've done some videos in the past where you only put one spider on. No, it is a spider pack. I assemble these packs ahead of time so they're easy uh, to put on with the one thing in. It's good to go. You know they're glued together. So here's our spider pack. I'm probably going to have to bore out the center of this to fit on this coil. I have not checked. Yeah, that's too tight. So I'm going to bore this out using this guy on a drill. Get that bored out so it'll slide on the coil. So we've got uh, this loosely assembled. Still got to mark the coil so we can put it in the correct position in the gap and the way that we find that, as you've seen in all of my other videos, is a 30 millimeter top plate. Center of the coil has got to be in the center of this. So we got to find the center of the coil and then mark it 15 millimeters up because that's half of the top plate. Then when we peek through there, that mark will be right at the top plate. That's the correct alignment. So this coil is 54 millimeters long. That would, so middle of that is going to be 27. We're going to take 15 off of the top plate, which is going to be 12. So we're going to come down 12 from the top and mark it. So the shim, what shim do we need? Well, I haven't figured that out. So we're going to now. Paper, it's really all you need. Uh, depending on the thickness of the paper, we'll change the number of sheets that you have. We're gonna start with three sheets and because this is so tight, that might actually work. And that is a very snug fit make sure that the coil can't move around. And it cannot, but you also have to be able to push down on it. So we've got to find our mark again, so I'll have to pop it out for that. There's our mark. We got our leads here, leads here. Make sure those are lined up. We're going to move the spider down and let it self adjust, so to speak. We're gonna take one sheet out because it was a little too snug once we started pushing it down. And 
And there it is in proper placement. So we're gonna get some glue. And we're gonna go real light right around here, just enough to hold it in place. But we don't wanna gob it up because the cone is gonna sit back on there. We don't wanna restrict it. So we've got that in place and we still need to put terminals on this basket. So before we get this two tied in, we're going to pull it out and we're going to get the new terminals on here. Now the terminals that were on here were all jacked up and broken and they did some janky work to try to get them to stay back in place. I'm not having it. So I've got new terminals. These particular terminals you can get from fixmyspeaker.com. They are PSI branded on here, but they will go right on this basket just fine. Uh, normally I do individual ones, uh, but these I wanted to do on here uh, because that's how this is set up. It'll be a little bit easier for me to deal with having these uh, screw-in types here. Uh, just nature of how this basket is and how it's designed originally. So we've got to take those screws out and uh, drop them and then find them uh, before they can go back in. Left is always going to be positive, right is going to be negative when the sub is in this position. I'm going to hold off putting these in place where the terminals go until after I've got the spider in place. It'll just be a little easier not have it in the way. So we've got our shim. We've got our start our assembly. Now we've got to get our cone on as seen here, uh, but we've got our leads that poke up here and sometimes they can be tough to manage. So what we're going to do, is take some painter's tape and just kind of hold them right to the former on both sides. And that way we can fight it just a little bit less. And we want to make sure that our leads are lined up uh, at the basket where they should be because we're going to put on the cone, which has notches for mounting in it. We want to make sure everything lines up. I'm going to take the tape off. And you can see what we're working with. So now we've got everything in the proper place. Yes, I realize this is up just a little bit. Uh, the spiders, we've got just a little bit higher than you would normally, but that's okay, because this little bit, we are going to pull down with clamps. That's not gonna affect anything. Um, it's not going to affect anything negatively, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that. 
so the cone will be in the correct spot when we go to glue and solder. Just make sure that it's where it's going to end up. So it ends up not being warped or anything like that. So you know, everything's tight, snug, in the right spot. We've got to solder it and glue it. So we're going to take the leads from the coil, wrap them around. See how I did that? I took the lead, just wrapped around these. If this video gets, uh, we'll say, 10,000 views in the first five days, I'll start showing you how I solder these things and put a camera up top so you can actually see it. So we're gonna solder these leads. Now the joint's soldered, we're going to chase it with glue. You wanna make sure that the joints are cooled off before you do this. Uh, you're not gonna have a good result. Hot glue uh, doesn't bond on here as well. Now we've got the top glued. We've got this joint and this joint as well. I got it flipped over. We're gonna give it the glue. In this case, we've got distance from the leads where it comes up. I'm also going to throw some glue on that just to make sure that those are secure. So that joint is secure and in place and good to go. Leads are secure. Those won't bounce around. Now the only one left is this one right here. Now 
now we've got all of our joints glued in and we essentially have a drop in. We're gonna use CA glue on the spider landing and then E6000 on the surround, but we're not gonna put the surround on right away because we've still got to connect our terminals. Totally optional if you want to. You can put clamps on the spider. You just want to make sure it's down all the way. I like to, just in case the spiders were a little warped from shipping or anything like that. If they're really, really stiff spiders like these are, at least stiff until you get them broken in, then uh, you might have not good contact if there's a little wave in it and like that. So we're going to have those secured with accelerator for all the glue that's hanging out. So now we can actually take these clamps off so we don't have to deal with them. Now, because we have a large surround, we can flip it up like that and it'll stay there. You can't do that with all of them. But now we can put our leads in place. Now with the leads slid onto the terminals, we've got to solder them. Again, 10,000 views, five days. I'll show you how I do it.
everything soldered. Leads are clipped. Remember, we're not going to the end of these leaving a giant loop. I've seen people do it. They just pile it up in there and no. Solder it, appropriate length, cut it. So now we are to being the surround. Glue down for that, we're gonna use E6000. You can see I've used it before, use it every time, use a lot of it. You don't have to put a ton on here, it is gonna squish out. It is important to not skip over the mounting holes. Uh, there is a small gap there. You want to make sure you have glue all the way around. Just go on the other side of the hole. If you leave it loose, it could possibly blow out. So we are going to get that down. We're going to go back to our clamps. Everybody says I use too many of. I do like to alternate sides to ensure we're not pulling in one direction. If you've been watching this long, you obviously like what I'm doing here, so make sure you give the video a thumbs up and you check out the other sub build videos in the playlist, wherever it ends up. So we are gonna let this sit for about an hour, this clamped up uh, for these 6,000 to dry. And uh, then we'll be good to go in that aspect. Now, since the spider on the bottom here has been secured, we've got the top secured by all these clamps. We can take the shim out and put the dust cap on. So this is gonna be an EMF-ish sub. Uh, now the bottom of this is perfectly smooth. That's not a great bonding surface. So you can use sandpaper or when you still haven't gotten more sandpaper, you just use a flat disc. So now we've got a nice scuff surface, so that'll be good for bonding. And we are going to use E6000. So I'm gonna put a bead right around the inside edge of this because when you push it down on the cone, it's gonna to move towards the outside. And that's gonna leave a nice clean install on this. We're not gonna have glue poking out everywhere, which can just look not very good. Not every dust cap has this much of a flange. I try to use the same kind of method uh, you don't have to spread it out around it if you don't want to on the thinner uh, mounting flange ones. I tend to do that just so it can't squeeze out as much. And now we're going to set the dust cap on, making sure that the EMF logo lines up how we want to. Terminals are running this way. So I'm going to flop it down right there. And here we have it, the final product. So on the test bench, we're gonna run our test track, make sure we don't have any weird problems, funny noises that are not expected, that kind of thing. And uh, make sure that it's not DOA, which it, it wouldn't be. Uh, so we're gonna run test track on here and you might notice this is gonna sound a little different 
than a lot of subs that I do. Um, you can have distortion in different ways, be it mechanical or electrical. Some of those come from the motor design, some of them come from the spider design or the surround design, that kind of thing. And normally any sub that I actually design is pretty mechanically quiet. This is not gonna be one of those subs. This is not going to be a low distortion, uh, fantastic crystal clear sounding sub. The gaps on this are very, very tight, though they are now safe, unlike before, so it won't self-destruct. But the motor design and all that stuff, not a low distortion design, so just keep that in mind when this thing is going. These spiders are also not the best sounding spiders. Um, they do have some, uh, we'll say mechanical distortion in them. But they should sound okay in car, but when you're doing it like this, not exactly going to be mechanically quiet. Also, the pull vent on this, extremely small, um, high velocity, this gap vent. There's just a lot of things going on here, um, which you're about to hear. So here's our test track, showing that everything plays fine. No knocks, no bangs, just not the cleanest sub. So you heard a lot of air from this vent. Um, this actually has a hole in it, so it's not completely blocking the pole vent. Um, but there's a lot of wind chafing happening in there. Um, but is what it is. If you know what you're listening for, I could tell the spiders have a little bit of noise in them. Um, it's kind of hard to explain what that actually is, but the sub does play. We got plenty of throw. It should be perfectly fine sound all right in vehicle if you like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up make sure you're shopping emf car audio for all of your car audio needs i get asked every time can i recon your sub maybe but factor in shipping both directions if it's a really cheap sub is it going to be worth it probably not if it's a classic it might be worth it to you i've done plenty of those check out the playlist for those and i'll see you again in another tech stuff eh, whenever